Italy is a magnificent country, but my, oh my, what contradictions. It's one of the world's top tourism destinations, but its financial problems and unwillingness to become more productive are harbingers of a significantly declining prosperity. It's home to some of the most brilliant thinkers and artists of all time. It's also the country that gave us Silvio Berlusconi and Bunga Bunga parties. Let's talk Italy, Parliamo Italia, with Italian MP Francesca Lamarca, who represents North and Central America in the Italian Parliament. Benvenuta. Grazie mille. Thank it's you nice so to much. have you here. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, you're going to forgive these first few questions because they're about you as opposed to politics, but you're a bit unusual for us in as much as you're an Italian member of Parliament, but where are you born? I was born here in Toronto. You're from Toronto. I am. And grew up here? And grew up here, exactly. Went to university here? Did everything here. I, was, I lived here until a year ago. How did you end up a member of Parliament in Italy? I know. Crazy. Crazy, isn't it? And I get asked that question all the time. That's just because it's a good question. Yeah, exactly. Well, because about a year ago, a little over a year ago, well, more than a year ago, um, I was asked to run. I was asked to throw my name in the hat. By and I, By the party, the Partito Democratico here in Canada. So specifically the Toronto chapter um, asked if I would be interested in running. They were looking for a woman with specific qualifications and I had always been in, involved, involved passively if you will, so um, on the sidelines and they asked if I would be interested in running. And the Democratic Party in Italy would be more like our new Democratic Party here in Canada, fair to say? Exactly. It is yeah. fair to say. So like NDP, liberal, but I would say more NDP. And mm -hmm. your party, the Democratic Party, has the largest number of seats in the Italian legislature right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. We have the majority in the Chamber of Deputies. And how do you actually get elected? That's another very interesting question, which I get asked all the time. Well, um, as of 2006, Italy has allowed its citizens living abroad to, to vote, to have direct representation in Parliament. And so the globe is essentially divided into four parts. One electoral college is mine, North and Central America. And the way people vote is by correspondence. So ballots are received through the mail and they're sent back to Rome. Um, there's been a lot of, there are a lot of issues and this has also been contested by, by many as to rendering it more secure, but thus far it is by correspondence. So the people who voted for you to be their representative in the Italian Parliament all live in North and Central America? They have to live. And not only do they have to live in North and Central America, but they have to belong to this um, list. They have to be on a list of Italian citizens who actually reside in this electoral college. Okay, so do you know how many votes you got? Um, if I remember correctly, it was around 6,000, which doesn't seem like a lot. This is, we call them preferences. So um, essentially each party had about three or four candidates running. My party happened to have four, myself and three others. Uh, one from Montreal, one from Los Angeles and another from uh, New York. And so altogether, our party received the vast majority of votes. But I, as an individual, received about, I, I think it was actually over 6,000. And then um, the next person received about 5,000, the other 4,000. And how so, often yeah. do you have to go to Italy to sit in the chamber and vote and do all of that? Well, to be honest, I'm more there than here. I mean, my responsibilities are there. So as an MP um, elected in the Italian Chamber of Deputies, I have to be there. But I also have responsibilities here. So I need to come back and, you know, have contact with constituents. And um, and so I, I come back whenever I'm, I'm needed. But I would say that I spend much more time there than here. Now this is, I don't have to tell you, yeah. this is, uh, I don't know, is Toronto the second or third largest Italian city in the world? I mean, it's up there, right? It's definitely up there, yeah. absolutely. It's up there with Melbourne and... So what do people come to you, people of Italian heritage here who want some problem solved and you're their representative in the Italian parliament, right. what do they want you to do? Typically. Well, they want a lot of things. There are many issues that we're 
that I'm focusing on along with my colleagues elected abroad in the Partito Democratico. So there is health care, you know, there's health care coverage for Italian citizens who go back to Italy. As you know, so many go back in the summertime for a month or two months. And um, so health care is a major issue. Citizenship is a huge issue because, as you know, so many long time ago lost their Italian citizenship um, in order to become Canadian citizens. And so that's a huge issue. How do I get my citizenship back? You know, I, I'd like to be a dual citizen. So that's one issue. Um, the um, promotion of the Italian language and culture, that is huge. Um, you know, funding for Italian language courses are more important than ever because we feel that here in North America we are losing our language. And so what's happening with third and fourth generation Italian kids? I mean, many of them don't, don't speak a word of Italian, sadly, and so we're really trying to promote that. And so that's another huge issue, um, and there are many others. How would you rate your Italian? How would I rate my yes. Italian? Oh, goodness. I don't know if that's really a fair question. Um, I, <laughs> how would I rate my Italian? Well, they tell me. I can mm. tell you what I'm told. Okay. I'm told that I am, I am fluent uh, You're definitely Italian. fluent. I've seen your videos, but, but you're, um, it's not your first language. No, I mean, you know what's interesting, technically it is my first language because as a very small child my parents spoke to me only in Italian, oh, okay. nothing but Italian. So I actually went to preschool not speaking a word of English and the teacher told my parents, you may want to consider speaking to her in English. Um, but no, you're right, English is my first language as I was born and raised mm -hmm. here. Um, so, yeah. Do you have the same rights and responsibilities as any other MP who is elected in Italy? Proper? Definitely. We have, in, in fact, we have greater responsibilities because we have to act as MPs representing Italians in Italy as well as Italians living in our electoral college. So doing things for the citizens of Italy, but also focusing um, on the, the needs of people here. How do you like the job? I, I, I love it. I must say it's extremely challenging. It's extremely challenging, extremely exciting. I mean, I say that my life has changed 180 degrees and it truly has because there is never a dull moment, as you can imagine, especially in Italian. It is Italy. It is Italy. And you know, I, I made the, I don't know if you'd say the mistake, but I, I, I was interviewed um, by someone who was, let's say, less than honest and um, they cut and pasted the video. And so it's not at all what I was trying to express. But what I was trying to say in this interview is that Italian politics, seen from someone who was born and raised in an Anglo-Saxon society such as ours, is highly unpredictable, highly precarious, unstable. And it's true. I mean, the fact is that there is a vote of confidence practically every week. Um, things change on, on a dime. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to paint it as... It, it, it is wonderful. It's wonderful and frustrating and exciting and uh, all those things. It is a typical feature, though, of Italian politics to have governments fall, I mean, all the time. What, what number of government is this? All the time. Well, Since look, the end of World War II. It's, oh, my goodness. I mean, Absolutely. And to think that I've been there for a year, so in a couple of days it'll be exactly one year since I, you know, I first started. And we're seeing this is our second prime minister, second <laughs> prime minister. So. Well, let's talk about some Italian politics. Sure. How much trouble is your country in? That's not a fair question, Well, Steve. they're all fair <laughs> questions, Francesca. Hang on. Now, by that I mean, uh, let me set it up a little more. It's a rich country. It's part of the G7. Yes. But the impression we certainly have over here is that productivity in the country stinks and that people don't want to work hard and that uh, the country is an economic basket case and is and its future is in some considerable um, question. Right. Is that off base? You know what, that's actually a very fair question and I hope that maybe I can set the record a little straight. Um, 
It is absolutely true that Italy has been, these are very difficult times for Italy. There is so much bureaucracy and Italians are well aware of that. Um, people talk politics all the time. I mean, the average citizen walks down the street and talks politics. You cannot find a channel in which there isn't a show that discusses politics. So Italians are very, very aware of the issues of the problems of the nation. So um, they are very difficult times for Italy, but I personally feel that the worst is behind us. So with this new young dynamic leader, um, Matteo Renzi, who is our brand new Prime Minister, um, things are changing. I've, I've already witnessed it. I mean, even in the past few weeks, the Jobs Act will be coming out soon. He's already taken steps in order to promote economic uh, growth. He, I find it very interesting that his first foreign visit was to Tunisia, to North Africa, where he placed the focus on the Mediterranean and said that we need to bring the Mediterranean countries together and instead of placing, placing the focus on Germany to make it Mediterranean centered and to foster the economy of the region. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing these changes. I'm seeing these changes and there is renewed hope in the country. Certainly bureaucracy, Italy is known for its bureaucracy and it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. But I believe that this new prime minister will actually do something to um, to, to lessen the burden of bureaucracy. I am told if you're a young person, and by that I, I, I know you're young, but I mean like people of half your age, really. for example. <laughs> well, you're not even 40 yet, are you? No. Right, so I'm talking about people who are in, you know, in their 20s, in post-secondary. Um, they're leaving Italy because they just don't see any future. They don't see any opportunity. How true is that? That is very true. That's a reality. I mean, there are literally, literally hundreds of thousands of young Italians who are forced to go abroad. Many are trying to come to Canada, but Australia is actually the number one country for these young Italians because they have degrees and they are extremely qualified and have you know lots of qualifications but unfortunately have to go abroad in order to to find employment our new prime minister at NC is actually that's these made that a huge issue as did our former prime minister Letta to focus on young people creating jobs for young people and trying to bring them back back to Italy how old is the current PM is he's like 46 or something or he's actually my age he's he's 30 we were born I was born at the end oh, of the year right? and he was born at the beginning so he's 39 he's the youngest prime minister Italy has ever had huh yeah and the uh, the cabinet, the average age of the cabinet, is the youngest apparently in 70 years or something absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely it is. And, and they've got male, equal numbers of male and female in the cabinet as well, I think. In cabinet, yes, it is exactly 50-50, and yeah. it's something that Renzi really wanted to do. So eight female ministers and eight male And ministers. a female defense minister. Absolutely. Which has never happened before. Never happened before, that's right. So on the surface, things look pretty different in Italy. I can tell you that there are a lot of misconceptions. I mean, certain things, as you said, are they are true. Bureaucracy, huge financial issues, but there is this awareness that I think um, most non-Italians don't don't recognize. It, you know, the the fight for um, you know women's rights and that need to be 50-50 and to have every opportunity that, that men have, that is huge to Italian women and that's something that we've been battling with. I mean, just last week we focused on this amendment and it was really interesting because women versus men, all, I would say 99% of the women in parliament versus 99% of the men who wanted this amendment passed to ensure that it be 60-40, that we have 40% women and 60% men on the on the ballot, um, and, and and that's something that most most non Italians aren't aware of. Really, that fight for equality for women's rights. Um, another huge issue is is immigration. I think that most um, non Italians don't recognize how many immigrants there are in Italy right now, and how many how many how how sensitive most Italians are to this issue, and how welcoming they are to to immigrants. I don't know if you saw this in The Economist from a few weeks ago, but I'm going to read you a short excerpt and then yes, we'll go from there. Sure. I'll get your view on it. Sure. Many senators, it reads, including some of his own, were openly dismayed by Mr. Renzi's almost insolent manner. He broke with tradition by speaking off the cuff and for some of the time with one hand in his pocket. And he told his audience bluntly that he intended scrapping their jobs. 
He is planning to turn the Senate into a regional chamber like the German Bundesrat. When an opposition lawmaker objected to his manner, he replied that it was perhaps because you are increasingly far away from how people speak outside. There's a generational thing happening now in Italy, right? There is, is. Is, there, is there, I don't want to over, overstate this, but right. is there a coming confrontation between the older and the younger generation? There has been. Um, there certainly has been. <laughs> um, there's, there's no question. I mean, Renzi got to where he is also because of this, this divide between the older generation and the younger generation. So the younger generation did a lot to get him to where he is. Um, there is a generational divide, but I see that he is now bringing into the fold those that he had perhaps um, initially alienated. He's now sort of bringing them back into the fold because people recognize just how qualified he is. You're going to forgive this next line of questioning, sure. but um, you know, I've got an Italian member of parliament here and I've got to ask about the most famous Italian parliamentarian in the world. Have you met Silvio Berlusconi? I haven't. I've seen him um, at a few votes of, well, this was last year, votes of confidence in the Chamber of Deputies where I am, um, just flooded by media, of course. But I, no, I have not met him personally. Is he still a force in Italian politics? He is still a force. It would be unfair to say that he isn't. Um, he, he is no longer a senator, as you know, mm -hmm. thankfully. Um, Why do you say thankfully? I say thankfully because I am personally against everything he, he stands for, um, the way he's conducted himself and the party um, and just everything that he, that he has done. I vehemently disagree with, <laughs> viscerally actually, um, and so thankfully he is no longer a senator. But he still, he still has, um, he does have a significant amount of support in Italy, that is true. Well, he's, he's still the richest man in Italy, right? He owns one, all the media? He, if, he, if not the richest, he's one of the richest. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Do people There's take no him question. seriously still? Unfortunately, there are people who do. But I think, you know, what's, what's sad is that the media outside, outside of Italy, particularly outside of Europe, doesn't realize how much opposition he has, how, how many people... Um, are, are just against, like me, everything that he stands for and how many people have fought to bring him down. So I think that unfortunately um, around the world there's this impression that you know it, it, Italy supports Berlusconi, that Italy is shares his views, which is not at all true. I mean I've witnessed it. I would say that the majority of, of MPs and the majority of the population I would say um, is, is against what he stands for, although he does still have a significant number of supporters. He has been Prime Minister a couple of times, and do you think he's got a shot at it again? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. His day is done. No. I think his day is done. Do you think he's going to jail? No, I don't believe he will go to jail, unfortunately. <laughs> again, unfortunately. You'd again, like to unfortunately. See him, you'd like to see him in jail. I believe that's where he belongs, but unfortunately, I don't. I don't believe he will end up in jail. No. Hmm. Uh, why don't we finish up here on this then? Uh, if the impression that too many people have of Italy comes from Silvio Berlusconi and all of his antics, uh, and we're not unfamiliar with antics at the highest level in this city, we have right. a mayor right now who's had some difficulties in his private life as well. Uh, let's finish on this. What's the impression you'd like to leave with people about the real Italy as opposed to the caricature we may be reading in the newspapers? I'd like people to know that Italy is a truly modern country and that in many ways it is like Canada. Um, Italy embraces immigrants. Italy fights for equality. Italy wants a better future, is looking for decent wages. Um, Italy treats its citizens with it with respect I believe um, Italy has universal health care um, it, it truly is a wonderful country to live in um, it, it is not Berlusconi Italy is not the reflection of Berlusconi Berlusconi is not the reflection of Italy we still have a long way to go and I think that Italy 
also has a lot to learn from Canada, but people should know that it is a truly modern country, and um, and it, it's not it's not the way it's perceived around the world. There's no more magnificent city in the world than Rome, is there? Rome is spectacular. It really I is. have to say, Rome is spectacular, especially in the spring. There's nothing like it, truly. Yeah. There's nothing like it. We're so glad you could spare some time for us on this Thank visit. So we wish you a safe trip back to Italy. That's Thank Francesca so. Lamarca, Thank who so is the member of the Italian Parliament for Central North America and for the Democratic Party, which is currently in power there. Mille grazie. Grazie. Grazie a lei. Thank you so much. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.